Hi Stitchers, this is me recording my very first video. I have been watching you guys on YouTube and Flosstube, watching your wonderful videos, sitting back, stitching with you, laughing with you. Some of you just crack me up. Um, so I've been enjoying your videos for a really long time and I kept telling myself, I'm going to make my video, I'm going to make my video. So here we are, we're at that day. Um, my name is Letitia. Um, on Instagram as the Crafty Curator. Um, I've posted a couple of uh, pictures on there recently. I'm pretty new to Instagram, so maybe you've seen them. Um, so maybe what I'll show today um, will look a little bit familiar. Uh, but just to get you st get started here, I want to share this story, this little incident that just took place in my house. Crazy town in here. I have a kitten that's like five months old and a pug puppy that's six months old. Best buddies, cutest thing ever. Um, they play, I was about to say they laugh, they don't laugh, but they play together, you know, they run around, keep each other occupied, you know, brother and sister, cutest thing ever. Well, on our deck, our doggie likes to go out on the deck. So the dog will run out on the deck and the kitten will run around after, after her and we're like, no, the kitten has to stay inside, this, that, and the other. Well, she got out about literally like 10 minutes ago. So she runs out on the deck and instead of, you know, just running out and looking around and sniffing and looking at the scenery and the changing of the leaves. No, no. She wants to take a flying leap off the deck and she lands onto the, um, what do you call them? They're not guardrails. That's on the highway. What do you call them? The, the, um, you know, the drainage. Of course, I can't think of a name, but anyway, she ran out there. Stuck all out there on the, the awning. I mean, not coming back in. I'm screaming for my husband to come and get the kitten. Long story short, I think I was I was literally seconds away from being that person that calls 911 and says, please help me, my cat's stuck on the roof. I was about to be that person. Um, but we lured her in with a can of cat food and all is well. Everybody's in the house. Everybody's alive. So anyway, my adventure is Saturday evening. Um, so I don't have the list that everybody has for the um, stitchy tag, but I can tell you a little bit about me. I have been stitching probably for the past 30 years yeah 30 years um i'm 40 i'm not ashamed to say that i'm 40 now but i've been stitching probably since i was about 10 years old and i have a very vivid memory of the first time i ever saw anyone doing um, anything remotely close to needlework i was living in precipity new jersey at the time and I was outside playing, you know, running around, being stupid, being a kid, riding my bike, whatever the case may be. And there was this woman that was sitting on the steps, on the steps of the townhouse next to us, that lived next door to us. And she was just sitting there and I saw her doing something with the yarn and it looked like she was making a picture and it was colorful. Uh, so I go over there and, you know, this was back in the day when you could go up to the str a stranger and be like, hey, what you doing? Um, and that's what I did. I went up to her and I was like, what is that? And she showed me she was doing needlepoint. I remember she was doing needlepoint with the yarn and the plastic and not plastic canvas, but with the canvas. But I was so amazed that she was making this beautiful picture just with this yarn. Um, and I sat there and I watched her and I never saw anything like it. Um, never saw it again until my first job. Um, which was Frank's Nursery and Crafts, if anybody knows that store. It's been out of business for a long time. But it was just that. It was a plant nursery slash craft store. They had such a thing. But anyway, I wanted that to be my first job because I loved crocheting. My mom taught me how to crochet when I was eight. Um, and I just loved it. You know, I made the crooked scarves and, <sighs> and stuff I made back then was a hot mess. But I loved it. But anyway, I decided my first job was going to be at Frank's Nursery and Crafts because I could get a discount on yarn. So I did. Um, so I was working there and people started coming through with the cross stitch and I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? It's so beautiful. And I was looking at their patterns and their packages as they, you know, as I rang them up. And then I purchased one. Um, and it was probably something so small, like a little smiley face or flower. Um, and as you can imagine, it, it the first go-round was a hot mess, but I loved it. Um, the back, you know, you know. But anyway, 
um, I started off with these little projects and then I ventured into bigger projects with the stamped cross stitch and that was not my thing at the time it was but uh, I don't know it never looked neat it uh, I had trouble getting the needle through so I eventually graduated into counter cross stitch and I'm telling you keep in mind I just said I'm stitching for like 30 years but it was only within the past I want to say three or four years that I realized what was out there in regard to cross stitch because I didn't realize that there were things beyond a kit that's all I knew that's all I knew that was in Michaels that's all I knew that was in Joann's I didn't know that there were cross stitch websites knew nothing about it um, until one day I stumbled upon a site called mystic stitch and you always hear about heaven and earth you always hear about you know the heaven and earth designs but I didn't learn about that until I started you know being on Facebook and in the cross stitch community there or of course watching YouTube um, so I knew Mystic Stitch and Mystic Stitch is very much like um, Hay Designs where you take um, works of art basically and they're converted into a cross stitch design and it's absolutely stunning work but if all you're used to is what you've seen in um, a dimensions kit when you see a website you know with all of these options it's mind-blowing and that's what it was it was mind blowing um, and I haven't purchased anything in a kit since it's all been off the website with the patterns and um, now I'm finding patterns on Etsy and finding things on eBay and um, being enabled on YouTube mm -hmm, you know you are but um, now it's like this whole new world that you know I've rediscovered and it's it's great it's great I just love it um, yeah, I lost my thought. Okay, I lost my thought. I still haven't had, I've still never done a heaven and earth design. Um, I have in, I, I don't finish things. I don't finish. Very rarely will I finish something and it's terrible. But I love starting a new project. Just love it. It something about it if I see the pattern and it speaks to me, I'm excited and I want the fabric and I want the floss and I want it now and I get it started and take off and then you know you get the pile um, and that's kind of where the name for on Instagram came from um, the crafty curator that's my tag name on Instagram and I'm not a curator I, I'm in health insurance I have nothing to do with museums of any sort but it's kind of funny because when you go into my garage or in my basement and you see the piles upon piles organized piles the piles of patterns and the craft containers filled with beads and floss and let's not even get started on the yarn and the knitting needles and the crochet hooks and all of the things that I enjoy just so much of it because stashes upon stashes have been built over the years it's enough to open up an institution of art so there you go I'm the crafty curator all right um, but anyway, most of the stuff stays downstairs and I've we recently moved into um, a new home and I, I swore I wasn't going to have my stuff everywhere. Not that it was everywhere, but uh, my craft items seemed to take up, you know, they did take up a significant portion of the bedroom and the living room and other areas of the house. Um, you know, and my husband's very supportive of my craft and my madness, but he was, you know, starting to get a little rough around the edges because everywhere he turned there was yarn or stitching stuff so I needed a place so right now it's in the garage in the basement um, so I have three projects going on right now that I keep with me or in the car um, three or four I don't know but downstairs I have ugh, it's a stash video in the making I'll just say that whole bunch of stuff lots of good stuff um, but I'm trying to keep it at a minimum so I don't keep bringing stuff up and you know be you know entice to start something new get my hands on something new but anyway that's how I got started oh, I'm all over the place that's how I got started in Frank's Nursery and Crafts and I started my cross stitching and um, I always seem to go back and forth between knitting and crocheting and stitching but ever since this whole YouTube phenomenon and the mystic stitch and the hate designs 
it's so fascinating seeing what people have been doing and you know kind of, kind of moti motivates you to stay on the, the cross stitching path and that's what it's done for me so um, when I watch these videos it's, it's funny because I used to go on YouTube just to kind of fumble around and see if there was anything in cross stitch and you might find you know the random lady showing you how to do a basic stitch or how to do cross stitch with a perfect finish or you know just basically how to cross stitch videos not look at what I've done they were very far and few between but somehow over the past couple of years I'm telling you I could watch YouTube for a long time and I do for a long time I sit there and I open up my computer or my iPad and I just watch the um, videos on my playlist and I stitch happily and I laugh with you guys and I'm telling you it's like the best thing you know we all have this passion for this art and or this hobby art whatever you want to call it but we all share this passion so we all love to watch yeah the dog and the cat just crashed into the bedroom door again circus crazy town but anyway Did you hear that? That was it all. Um, but anyway, we all have this passion for what we do. And, you know, it's just so great seeing what everybody's doing and being able to share, you know, those new experiences or see what type of fibers you're using or what type of fabric you're using. And it's just all very exciting. So here I am adding to the community, adding my little two cents, if you will. Um, but I have three works in progress going on. Um, that I'm going to show you and hopefully I'll be able to this will motivate me to keep moving on them so maybe I'll actually finish one of them maybe hopefully maybe um, I think I'm actually going to try to try my hand at a rotation I tend not to rotate my projects because I'm um, easily distracted and I'll start one and then I want to go back and work on that other one and then go back and work on that other one and then maybe there's one that I just keep in the car. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason to which one I work on and when. It's basically whatever I feel like working on. Um, but I get nowhere fast. So maybe I'll take a page out of um, Jessie Marie Does Stuff. I'll take a page out of her book and try to do a weekly rotation because she seems to be pretty disciplined with that. I'm not. So, you know. I'm going to try. And anyway, the first one that I have, um, actually two of these projects, I'm embarrassed to say, I've started and started them like three times each for different reasons. Didn't like the fabric, didn't like the floss, whatever the case may be, I felt the need to start it and start it and then start it again. Um, so here we are with, this is called Art One, and I'm going to pull up the design so you can actually see what it looks like unprepared.com that's me um, okay. the first one is a love thy thread pattern um, I call it the fish because it looks like a fish but it's not I don't know maybe it is it looks like um, the Zentangle they call it the Zentangle artwork that's being done it, it might actually be Zentangle um, but the artwork itself is by Angela Porter um, but it's referred to on Love Thy Thread as Art One um, it's 383 by 383 stitches but this is what it looks like I hope you can see that That's what it, it's monochromatic so well I was about to say so that makes it easy but as you're about to see it's pretty cool huh it's not as easy as it thinks as one would think it's a monochromatic design but I decided I was going to get colorful um, and use a variegated thread but what I found out was that when you use a variegated thread on this type of design it takes away from the pattern and what I love so much about um, the pattern was the you know the intricacy of the the artwork it was absolutely stunning um, so I tried it with a variegated thread I think this is by water lilies by Karen I'm not sure I don't have it with me um, this is where I started it 
not used to this. One moment. Oh, there we go. This is how I started it. This is, um, it's got turquoise and mauve and brown and all different colors going on. It's an absolutely beautiful thread, but when you're trying to do a pattern like this one, I don't want the variation to be showing as much in the thread as I want it, as I want the pattern to be the dominant, um, the dominant feature. So I'll show it again, maybe let's see. Yeah, that's where you can see I did some frogging up there. You see the little shadow? So maybe that's not the best. Here we go. And there you can see the different colors and, you know, it's absolutely beautiful, but it's not what I wanted. So I decided I was going to go with a solid color. Um, and that's what I'm working on now. You might have seen some of my posts on Instagram. I'm making a mess. Okay. Um, so this is where we are now. This is the center. Mm -mm. Because I started and stopped. Where are we? Mm, out of focus. Okay. Because I started and stopped at the pattern so many times. Um, in the same spot because I also I started it with the multicolors and then I went back and did like a brick red um, and then I started with the olive green so I was starting it I started it twice in the same spot twice already and I was getting bored with that so I decided I was going to start in the middle so what you're seeing right here is the center of the entire design and just kind of work my way out and this is done on 18 count Ada, um, hand dyed in Ren. Ren is the color. W R E N. Hand dyed Ada. Um, it was dyed by Picture This Plus, and I'm using the Splendor Strandable 12 ply silk. Um, this is it right here. And normally, um, I'm familiar with this brand the rg brand i'm familiar with this when it comes to the petite treasure braid i've never noticed the 12 strand silk so because i normally use um dinky dyes or npi silks but i saw this in the local needle workshop and i looked at it and it's this i think this card was like three dollars for eight yards of 12 ply as opposed to three dollars for five meters of eight ply or three dollars and 50 cents, whatever I paid for this one. That was the MPI, I'll show you later. Um, but this one was $3 for 12 ply of, and eight yards of uh, silk. So it seemed like it was a much better buy. And I asked the lady behind the counter if she had ever tried it. And she said, yeah, she uses it all the time, this, that, and the other. And I was like, okay, well, let me give it a try. You know, it seems like a better buy. And I did want to do my, like I said, I call it my fish, my fish in all silk. So I gave it a try. And this is, um, S1 100. It's like a, like a deep army green. Yeah, it's, it's pretty accurate. But anyway, here's what I found about this silk. It's a beautiful silk, but it tends to fray or break easily. It also catches in the eye of the needle rather easily. Um, and I would love to hear any feedback, especially from Ms. Monkey Barkhead, because um, she seems to be the resident expert on silks. And I know you'll say you're not, but on YouTube you kind of are um, the resident expert on silks and all threads, really. But um, I don't know if you've ever used this brand. But what I found was that I need to use the thread heaven to condition it, number one. But even still, it catches in the eye of the needle and it snags and I end up losing um, more thread than I would with Dinky Dyes or NPI. So I'm not sure that I would buy this again, but I'm definitely going to continue on with it because it looks very nice when it's actually stitched up. It really does. I have no complaints on how it looks on the fabric. Um, it's just working with it is not as pleasant an experience as my other experiences with silk. So that's my fish. Um, and I'll keep you updated on how I'm doing with this. And I really want to see this come to life because I, I love this one. That's the fish. The next one is very familiar to everybody. I mean, 
All I have to do is show you that, and you know what it is. Mm -hmm. Black work journey. But what you don't know is that once again, this is one that I have started and stopped and started and stopped and started. This is my third, um, third go around with this project. And yes, this was a project enabled by the lovely Array, so thank you. Got a little situation here. A little situation with my fabric. Um, so that looks like absolutely nothing right now, and that's because um, I just recently restarted it. I did it before an 18 count Ada. Um, I didn't like how it looked on Ada. So I did it on a 22 count Hardanger. Um, some people refer to it as 22 count Ada, but it was 22 count. And I liked that, but I didn't, it was too compact. Um, it was too tight. It was problematic trying to, you know, work the filigree designs. So it was a little bit tricky and I want to be able to see them, not fight with them while I'm stitching. And 22 count was a little bit difficult. And it's actually recommended to be on 14 count or 28 count over two. So you can kind of understand how that might have been a stretch. Um, so this, what I'm working on now, is 32 count Joblin. Um, so I'm doing this over two, so it's equivalent to like a 16 count. Um, and I'm doing this one with um, NPI silks in black. Mm, not too exciting. Mm, okay, dog crashing into the door again. I don't know what's going on out there. But anyway, I'm doing this in NPI silks, NPI, uh, NPI needlepoint ink silks. Um, in black. I really do like this silk. It's so soft and smooth and it never snags. I don't need thread heaven. It's just a pleasure, really. Um, but it's just black. And instead of using the three metallics that the pattern calls for, I'm just using one because on the first go round, couple go rounds, I tried it with the silver and the um, copper and the gold and I don't know. I just didn't like them all together. Just I'm a simple girl, so I just wanted to use one metallic and one color bead, and I went with the Petite Treasure Bead Gold, and this is PBO3, nice bright gold, but not too bright. Um, I know the lovely Array was talking about her experience with the DMC floss. I actually, when I first started this project, ordered the I don't want to misspeak the Diamante DMC metallic on the spool, um, which is a little bit different, but it's, I think it was trying to emulate Krennic, but wasn't quite there, but definitely better than the six strand gloss you get out of Michael's or Joanne's. <clears throat> um, but I still had some problems. Um, so I went back to good old Treasure Braid. Never had problems with Treasure Braid. Um, so this is always good. It's nice and, you know, petite treasure braid, but it's nice and fine. You use just the one strand. It's not, um, it's just one strand. So you don't deal with, have to deal with trying to separate it like you would with the six strand DMC. And it's got a nice shine to it. Sparkle, sparkle. It's got a nice shine to it, so I always appreciate. I like using this. Um, it's very easy to work with. You don't get the bumps on the back that um, Mackenzie was referring to. And I keep looking over here at the picture. I'm not used to this, so if you see me looking like over here, it's because I forget that the camera's right here. But anyway, that's what I'm using. I'm using the NPI Black Chinese Silk and the Petite Treasure Braid and the beads from. I don't know, whatever was on the pattern. Um, I think it was the Mill Hill beads. I don't have them out here with me. Um, but you know what that's going to look like. It's the Black Work Journey. And maybe, just maybe, I won't start this again. Um, it's expensive to keep starting and restarting. and ugh, just have a problem. Last but not least is um, a fractal design I got off of Cross Stitch Collectibles. And it's so colorful. I'm going to show it to you. And I posted this. Wait. I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm trying to. 
log into my um, iPad so I can show you the fractal design. I posted a picture of this on a couple of my groups on Facebook because to everybody it looks different. Some people, well, let me show it to you. I'm trying to get it small enough so you can see the whole thing. And I hope this shows up. This is what it's going to look like. And it looks like different things to different people. Some people say they see scissors. And I can see, I think right there, right in this area here, is where they see the scissors. I see that. But what I saw, like right here, this image right here, it looks to me like a person. Like a woman. It kind of looked like somebody walking through this colorful maze to me. I don't know. It, it just really jumped out at me. And I don't know if you can see it, but the colors are so bright and vibrant. There were beautiful reds and greens and um, oranges and purple. It's just beautiful swirls of color. And it just jumped out at me. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that one. And here is my start. Oh, my little needle minder. Oh, we have the same hair do. Mm hmm You see that? Sassy. Um, but that's my little needle minder. But anyway, here is... There we go. The beginning. This is page one. I'm trying to find... Um, where's page one? I'm not coordinated. There we are. This is page one, and then this is page two right here that I'm working on. I tried my hand at parking, and I did stuck under there. I did pretty well with the parking. Um, but then I decided because there's such a big box of color, I wanted to see if it would go faster if I just did it cross country. So I'm doing it a little bit of both ways, but that's what I have going on right now. Um, those are my three main projects that are going on. I have so many patterns that I've downloaded off of Mystic Stitch, um, and I'll definitely show them to you if I do a stash video. But I wanted to get my face out there and say hi and just say thank you to all you guys that have been posting your videos regularly. I mean, I subscribe to many of you and I just love watching them. Um, and I get excited, you know, when I see a new post and telling you, it's just great stuff. You know, it's not everybody has something that they're passionate about that they truly love doing and they truly enjoy doing. Um, and here we have a whole community of people that share the same passion and love for, you know, um, this craft that that I do it and it's just a pleasure to watch you all so I just thank you for posting it and um, you know inspiring and motivating other people to do the same because what's what's out there on YouTube now it's not like it was a year or two ago I'm telling you you all knew the little basic videos what the how to cross stitch that's all that was out there and I still watched those but then it just blew up I remember the first person that I saw was Stitching May Angelicals Forever Stitching May Angelicals Forever um, Angelicals just posted another video so I'm happy to see her out again but those were the first two that I watched and um, I think with Stitching May both of them I just watched their videos back to back to back because I, I was so amazed at everything that they were able to show me um, and then uh, um, the lovely array it's, it seems so funny to watch you know because she says she only got back into it within I think within the past couple of years and she started showing the little smaller pieces with the um, elephant and the bunny and they were so cute and then she watched as she became you know her palette changed you know and um, it's just phenomenal to watch you know the progression and taste and, and skill and I just love it and some of the patterns that I've purchased, I've purchased because I've seen them on YouTube. Um, many of them actually. So I just want to thank you all for, you know, sharing your joy with me because it's my joy to watch it and hopefully you'll enjoy what I'm sharing with you. Um, so I'm going to try my hand at this rotation. I don't know which one I'm going to start with. Mm. 
it depends on how I feel, but I really kind of want to get back into my black work journey and see what happens with that. I think it's upside down, but you know, it's okay. Um, but I think I want to go into my black work journey and see what we're doing with that. Um, see what we're doing with that. I don't know what I just said. Um, but do this black work journey, get a, you know, do this for a week and then maybe jump back into my fractal and then back into the fish. And maybe, just maybe, next time I'll have a little more progress to show you. Um, so I'm going to try to figure out, I'm going to try to post this video. I've never posted a video before, so I don't know how this is going to go. Hopefully you will get to see this video. But I'm also going to try to post the links at the bottom, like everybody else does. I don't know how difficult that is. I just simply have never done it. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoy my first video. And... Um, hopefully there will be more to share soon. Let me know what you think. Um, and I would love to hear any feedback, if you don't mind, any feedback you guys have on this. Um, have you ever tried it? What did you think? I didn't have a, I won't say I, didn't, I had a bad experience. This just wasn't my favorite silk. Um, I'll call it a high maintenance silk. It was a little high maintenance, but we're working with it because I have like five cards of it, so I'm going to have to work with it. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what else there is to say. That's all I have for now, but those are my works in progress. Um, maybe next time I'll do um, one of those stitchy tag videos that everybody's doing. I don't know, but I just wanted to hop on here and say hi and show my stuff off too. Alright, so happy stitching and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.